Dear friends, welcome to another episode in the fantastic world of the military. In this video, we will talk about the next Russian offensive in Ukraine, expected to take place between the European spring and summer, with reinforced forces and ample ammunition. We'll discuss how Putin intends to return to the offensive. Like any other intense and dynamic conflict, the Russian invasion of Ukraine has been and continues to be marked by perfectly identifiable phases. The first began with the invasion itself, with Russia relying on the element of surprise and an immense force of over 150,000 soldiers, attacking from multiple fronts simultaneously and advancing strongly in all directions, notably in the south, in the regions of Zaporaya and Kherson. In this first phase, the tactical advantage was always on Russia's side, which exploited it well, consolidating its control over vast Ukrainian regions. The second phase began with the Ukrainian counteroffensive in September 2022, when, to everyone's surprise, the Ukrainians made strong advances into occupied areas in Kharkiv and Kherson, resulting in the liberation of over 5,791 square miles of Ukrainian territory. In the first half of 2023, despite the Russian victory in Bakhmut, overall, it was a phase marked by stagnation on the front lines, with little or no advancement by either side. Not even the Ukrainian offensive launched in June 2023 profoundly altered this stagnation, with Ukrainians forced to face heavily reinforced Russian defensive positions and unable to rely on indispensable weapons for offensive actions, such as fighter jets, making very discreet advances that hardly changed the disposition of the front lines. In November 2023, at the end of the European autumn, with winter approaching and the Ukrainian offensive already a total failure, Russia launched a long series of offensives at various points on the front lines, but also did not achieve any significant victories, except for the conquest of the ruins of the small town of Avdivka. During the winter, the Russians continued to carry out various small and medium offensives at various points on the front lines, but, as happened before, they failed to break through the lines at any point, leaving a very important question unanswered. Will Russia attempt a new major offensive against Ukraine, and if so, when and how will it occur? Considering recent statements made by Putin and top military officials, such as Sergei Shoigu, Russian minister of defense, a new Russian offensive appears imminent. In recent months, Russia has strengthened and accelerated its process of recruiting new soldiers, opting for two main avenues, hiring reservists for one-year deployments and recruiting inmates from Russian prisons, offering them pardon after a deployment in Ukraine. Thanks to this, Russia, according to Sergei Shoigu, managed to recruit nearly 500,000 new soldiers in 2023, with several sources believing that Russia will inevitably have to advance with a new mobilization action, as it did in September 2022, to compose the two new combined arms armies being created now in 2024. According to many analysts, all these recruitment actions will give Putin, in June 2024, more soldiers than he had available in February 2022 when he invaded Ukraine. The number of aircraft and, especially, armored vehicles was greatly reduced due to losses suffered over more than two years of war. But in terms of infantry, Putin will have, for the European summer of 2024, 15 to 20 percent more soldiers than when the war began. In parallel with the strengthening of its ranks, Putin is also in a rapid process of renewing his stocks of weapons and ammunition, as mentioned in recent videos here on the channel. Thanks to agreements signed with Iran and, especially with North Korea. Russia has access to gigantic stocks of ammunition, mainly artillery, precisely the type of weapon causing the most impact in this conflict. With this reinforcement of Russian stocks occurring just when Ukraine is suffering from a lack of weapons and ammunition, due to the blocking of new military aid from the United States, caused by the refusal of the Republican-controlled Congress to approve new packages of defensive aid for Ukraine, this combination of factors the chronic shortage of weapons and ammunition for Ukraine, the increasing flow of new soldiers to Putin's army, and, above all, the arrival of absurd quantities of ammunition to sustain its invasion effort, is leading many analysts to believe that the next Russian offensive in Ukraine will occur in the coming weeks, taking advantage of the rising temperatures and improving conditions for the movement of trucks and armored vehicles. An offensive that, as mentioned earlier, will likely involve a larger number of soldiers than those Putin mobilized at the beginning of the invasion. With such a significant force supported by gigantic stocks of ammunition, Putin, aware of the critical state of the Ukrainian forces, will have great freedom to choose his targets. 
with many believing that they will essentially be two, the city of Kharkiv and the regions of Kherson and Odessa. Capturing Kharkiv is important to reduce Ukrainian pressure on the north of Donbass, besides the fact that it would represent a severe strategic blow to Ukraine, being the country's second largest city. As for Kherson and Odessa, the goal would be to realize the Russian plan of annexing the entire southern Ukraine and linking with Transnistria in Moldova, occupied by Russia since 1992. This action also has strong economic objectives, since it would give Russia control over the important Ukrainian ports of Odessa. If Republicans continue to block defensive aid from the United States to Ukraine, Putin, with so many new soldiers and renewed stocks of ammunition, will have a clear path to advance and conquer the Ukrainian regions he desires to fulfill his territorial expansion plan. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe and activate the notification bell to not miss any news, criticisms, ideas, or suggestions. You can leave them in the comments.